Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Being able to provide power for you and your loved ones is important for any prepper, and there's a lot of different ways to go about doing that. And since there's so many options out there, navigating all of them can be a little bit of a challenge. So today we're going to be covering three of the most popular off-grid power options. We'll be taking a look at solar power options, traditional gas generators, and standby generators. And I would like to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video, but just know that as we're going through this, this is a look at what my family and I actually use during power outages and the things that we would use in more long-term situations and kind of how we would use them. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while and this was just a good opportunity to go ahead and do that. And my family's plan consists of both solar and traditional gas powered options. While we would love to have a whole home off-grid system that we could use to ride out the apocalypse, we're not there yet financially, but what we do have has us very well positioned to deal with just common short-term situations that are probably going to happen at least once a year, maybe more, just run-of-the-mill power outages, as well as more severe long-term situations. And the first part of my family's energy plan is solar. I've picked up several of these solar generators over the past year or so doing videos, so I kind of have a good idea of what different sizes can handle. And we primarily use the small ones to do things like power light. Take my wife, for example. She's a photographer, and sometimes it's a lot easier for her to just take something like, say, this River 2 with her, so that way she doesn't have to worry about messing with extension cords or finding outlets wherever she's shooting at. She can just plug her light straight into this. And the same is true for power outages also. You can take your lamp wherever you need it, plug it into this, and you have light. And of course, small ones like this are going to be really good for powering things like cell phones or recharging other kinds of batteries. Then larger solar generators like this Delta II, they're more comparable to something like a traditional gas generator because they have the power needed to run larger things like refrigerators, box freezers, even your washing machine. And if we experience a power outage, this is probably going to be the first thing that I break out because it can run those devices for at least a little while. Like this setup, the Delta II plus its extra battery can run my old kind of crummy refrigerator for around six or seven hours. And really that's plenty of time for most run of the mill power outages. And EcoFlow is running a pretty big Christmas sale right now where you can get up to 50% off. And if you use the links in the description below, plus this code, you can get an additional 5% off. Of course, the biggest advantage to owning a solar generator is that you don't have to store any fuel for them. If you have a power station and you have panels, then really you have everything that you need to provide reliable long-term power for you and your loved ones. And a lot of the newer ones like the Delta II and the River II, they have LFP batteries or lithium iron phosphate batteries, which have a much longer lifespan than other battery chemistries. I believe these both can go 3,000 cycles before they reach 80% capacity, and that's around a decade of regular use. Solar generators also require a lot less maintenance than traditional generators, and part of that's just because they have way fewer moving parts, and the moving parts that they do have aren't subject to the kinds of forces that something inside of, say, an internal combustion engine would be. That, and you're not going to have to mess with things like oil changes with these either. They're also safe to use indoors. If you try to bring a traditional gas generator inside of your house, you're probably going to end up with carbon monoxide poisoning, so don't do that. But with something like this, say your power goes out on Christmas morning, all you got to do is plug the tree in, and you're good to go. Christmas has been saved. But getting back to using them indoors, some more practical uses for that would be running things like CPAP machines, or if somebody in your family has a cough or cold, powering a humidifier. Another good thing about a solar generator is that you can use it just as a standalone power station to keep devices running, or you can use it while it's hooked up to solar panels. If you're using it just as a standalone power station, it's going to be good because you can take it wherever you need it, but it's only going to work for as long as as that battery capacity lasts. Then after that, you're gonna have to stop using it and then charge it back up with solar panels. So that's kind of a downside to them, is that if you don't have power coming into them, then if you're running some larger devices, they're probably not gonna last very long. But if you have them hooked up to a set of solar panels, then you can run things like freezers pretty much indefinitely, because a box freezer doesn't really use all that much power, and if you have good sunlight, 
then you could have more energy coming into the device from those panels than you're actually using. But if you're doing that, of course, you got to figure out how are you going to configure the panels and the power station so where it's getting the sunlight it needs, but you're also able to run power to that other device. Then you also got to keep an eye out for things like rain because if these get wet, it will damage them. And also, if you have a large solar apparatus in your yard, you got to think about how am I going to keep other people from seeing that if you're in a situation where security is a concern. Solar generators can also be more portable, but there are some fairly lightweight inverter generators out there as well. The next part of my family's energy plan consists of a dual fuel gas and propane generator. And I think the one that I have is a good representation of what most people could reasonably go out and pick up just because it's readily available. It it's more affordable than a lot of options, so you can get it and then some fuel for it, gas cans, propane tanks, extension cords, all that stuff. But one very good thing about a dual fuel generator is that it gives you more options to keep that device running. If you're in a situation where there's a gas shortage, maybe there's still propane or vice versa. And with a generator like this, if you can't get it to start with gas, there is a chance that you could get it to start on propane. So it gives you redundancy in that way also. But the biggest advantage to a traditional gas, dual fuel or tri-fuel generator is that it can stay running for as long as you have fuel for it. So if you're in a situation like you have a power outage that lasts more than a few hours, it lasts like a day or two, maybe longer, as long as you have fuel in it, you can run it pretty much constantly. Now, it might have to stop so you can refuel it or switch out propane tanks, check oil levels, things like that. But for the most part, it can run nonstop. And when it comes to gas generators, I like those that are rated between 3,500 and 5,000 running watts because they can provide enough power for, like in my case, my freezer and my refrigerator, but they're also fuel efficient. They're not gonna be using as much gas as like say a 10,000 watt generator would. But the biggest downside to a traditional generator is that it's only good if you have fuel for it. So this means that if you're concerned about a long-term disaster situation, then you're gonna have to store a lot of fuel regardless of the generator that you have. That's one big advantage of a solar generator is that once you have panels, that's your fuel source. But if you have a gas-only generator, then you're going to have to do things like add fuel stabilizer to the fuel that you're storing as well as rotate through it so that it doesn't go bad. You try to pour that into the generator, then you find out it doesn't work. That's not a situation that you want to be in. Propane's a better option for long-term storage just because that fuel doesn't go bad. As long as the tank that it's in isn't compromised, then the fuel inside can last for like 20 years or more. But the big downside to propane is that storing in large quantities is kind of cost prohibitive just because the tanks are so expensive. Last year, towards the beginning of the year, I think I paid around $35 for an empty tank. Now I paid $60 for one either this month or last month. I know you can do exchanges, but if you get an exchange tank, usually those only have around 15 pounds in them. If you have your own tanks and you take them to an actual propane place, then you can get the full 20 pounds. So that's why I do things that way. Gas generators also require more maintenance than a solar generator. Since there's more moving parts, you have to worry about things like gummed up carburetors, bad spark plugs, and also just letting gas sit too long in them can prevent them from being able to start up. If you use gas with ethanol in it, then it can really wreak havoc on those small parts. So that's another thing you gotta consider is while you can run them off of gas with ethanol in it, Running it with ethanol-free gas is a better option because it's not as hard on those internal components, especially things like rubber gaskets. You're also going to have to store things like oil and spare parts, like air filters, to keep them running long term. And you probably also want to remember to take it out at least once a month, start it up to make sure everything's fine as part of your normal maintenance schedule. And also, like I said earlier, these are not safe to use indoors. In fact, you probably want to have them at least 20 or 25 feet away from your home so that carbon monoxide doesn't get in. And the noise is another big concern. They're very loud. Even inverter generators can be loud enough to alert people around you that you have a power supply, which you may not want in certain situations. And I really do view solar and gas-powered options as kind of being able to complement one another. Say you're in a situation where you have a lot of cloud cover, your solar panels haven't really been able to recharge your power station, 
you got a gas generator, you can plug your power station into that and let it recharge that way. If that's the primary way that you would be using a generator like that, then EcoFlow does have a dual fuel smart generator, which is designed to integrate with some of their larger power stations like the Delta Pro and the Delta Max. And on the other hand, if you have an electric start generator whose battery's gotten a little low, then you can hook that battery up to a maintainer, plug it into a power station, and get that battery up to the level that it needs to be at to start your gas generator. And the third kind of generator that we're going to talk about today is a standby generator. And these are usually hooked into your homes like natural gas supply or if you have a large propane tank on your property because maybe you live in a rural area, it could be hooked into those. And some can also run as a diesel backup. And what these are very good for is a lot of times they're hooked up to an automatic transfer switch. So when the power goes out, they'll automatically kick on and supply power to your home, but not allow that power to go back out into the main line and maybe like electrocute a line worker or something like that. So they're very good if you're somebody who maybe is a little bit older and you're not physically able to maneuver like pieces of equipment around, then they're gonna be good for that. But their big downside is gonna be that they will only be useful if you were able to receive natural gas from your utility company or for as long as you have propane in your propane tank. There were some situations where during the 2021 Texas ice storm that natural gas utilities were disrupted and folks that were relying on those standby generators were probably put in a pretty rough position. That, and if you're a prepper concerned about a long-term situation, then relying on a natural gas utility, of course, is, is not viable. Another way they could be useful is that if you have like a whole home solar power system, then they can provide additional energy on days and weeks where you're not getting a whole lot of sunlight. You're getting a lot of clouds. They can kind of fill that gap. Now, at the end of the day, solar generators, traditional gas generators, standby generators, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. But particularly for folks who are worried about a long-term disaster situation, who want something portable, and you don't want to have to depend on outside fuel sources or store a bunch of fuel on your property, I think that solar generators, they really do have a whole lot to offer. Once again, I'd like to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. And if you want to learn more about how to correctly determine what size solar generator you would need, then check out this video. Thank you all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.